2000 inductee, Dr. Emily Dunning Barringer, first female ambulance surgeon in the world. Born to parents who espoused that all children, regardless of gender, be trained to support themselves, Berenger earned her MD from Cornell University Medical School in 1901, a time when few women trained as physicians. Upon graduation, she took the qualifying exam for an internship position at Gouverneur Hospital of New York. Despite receiving the second highest grade, her application was denied because of her gender. Reapplying one year later and supported by lobbying from political and religious figures, she was accepted, becoming the first woman physician to receive postgraduate surgical training in hospital service and the first female ambulance surgeon. She was fiercely determined, fiercely determined woman. Um, everybody said that about her. Uh, a gentlewoman from, from the old school, but determined to do as much as she possibly could to uh, fulfill her potential. Education was very important. We lived next door to her, and then we lived with her um, for the last five years of her life. So she was around all the time, and of course she talked and uh, reminisced, specific as she could be for an eight or nine-year-old uh, grandson. But uh, I, she had written her own autobiography and had read that. When I went to Cornell as a uh, freshman, uh, her alma mater, I was approached by a, uh, another student and she came up and told me that uh, her mother had told her to look me up because my grandmother had inspired her to go into medicine. I read about the, the story of the, her first night at uh, Gouverneur Hospital when she was an intern and in which she was asked to catheterize the male patients. And she went ahead and did it. And um, she did it apparently with great equanimity. One reason she did is because her mentor, uh, Mary Putnam Jacoby, had prepared her for this. She said, you're going to go into a male-dominated profession. You're going to be required to do this for your patients. At last we reached it, turned the curve, and started down on the other side. And soon that dreadful ordeal was over. Martin and I had finished our last case, and the patients had maintained a profound and respectful silence. The lights were turned down, and the weary men left to rest. I had learned one great lesson that night, and that is that sex does not count when one is sick and in pain. The one who can bring the greatest help and skill is the one who is wanted the most. The problem of the men patients was solved for me that night. The nurses were supportive of her efforts, as were the ambulance staff, the men driving the horse-drawn ambulances. She goes on to great lengths about how she had to get that special uniform so she could swing in and out of the ambulance. <laughs> I figured that at night I might be summoned for emergency work and would have to go to male as well as female wards. There might not be time to get fully dressed. What could I wear over my night clothes in responding to such calls? In the gay 90s, it was not seemly for young women to be seen in the informal attire that they can wear today, and so probably inclining in the opposite direction, I decided on a long gray woolen robe, which was buttoned severely down the front from my neck to my ankles. To complete this outfit, a pair of high pull-on slippers, which modestly disappeared under its hem, were secured so there would be no criticism of bare ankles in the days when ladies were not allowed to appear without stockings. That's what ambulances were like in 1902 and 1903. They were horse-drawn through the city uh, streets of New York, dodging trolleys, other trams, draft animals, everything. And that's, it was much more physical to be out. They had to take the doctors to the patients rather than the other way around, since minutes, even half an hour, could cost a life. Although New York was a rough city way back then, uh, it was probably one of the best places in the world to get a good medical education. With the, she served the docks through the ambulance service. She said every sort of disease and condition came in through New York. Mother of three children and married to a physician, Beringer's professional concerns included medical education for women, public health, women's suffrage, and reforms for the treatment of incarcerated females. Her autobiography, Bowery to Bellevue, the story of New York's first woman ambulance surgeon, was made into the MGM 1950 film, The Girl in White. 
he practiced medicine in Connecticut, in gynecology and obstetrics. She herself had lost a child in, in childbirth shortly after an infancy, so she knew firsthand the difficulties and wanted to do what she could to improve women's pregnancies. She and some women of her generation are lost in the modern history of women's movements, and I hope that if uh, any history of, is written of the development of uh, women in the professions, that she will have some place in that. <laughs>